Some of my favorite units when playing any Fire Emblem games have always been flyers. It's actually a surprise I haven't gotten to one yet for these solo runs. And today I aim to rectify this major oversight by finding out if you can beat Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones using only Tana. First off the rules, we're doing this on hard mode. No grinding is allowed, no hacks or cheats. I can only bring one healing item per map and I can't use the convoy to grab more healing items. I can however use it to grab weapons and any other type of items that are not healing items. So how well will the Princess of Frelia fare? Well, before we even get into looking fully at her stats and growth, I would like to hone down on the first few maps of the game as the strategy we'll employ here will be very unique to her class being a Pegasus Knight. And it'll come into play during the prologue even. As a flyer, she doesn't get any movement restrictions from terrain, which allows her to use the map to its full advantage. As you can see here, avoiding all the other fighters standing in the mountain and attacking O'Neill directly to kind of easily win the map. Also, quick note about her starting inventory. I went with Erica's route version since on Ephraim she gets no equipment and the run would pretty much already be over if she got no equipment. And as you can see here due to the weapon triangle disadvantage we're facing, hitting O'Neill will not be an easy task. And this is the reason I avoid the other fighters because their hit rate and damage on Tana would have been very high given that they not only have the weapon triangle advantage but Tana with her base equipment suffers from a huge speed penalty. As you can see right here on the screen, Tana begins with one of the best base speed in the game with an exceptional 13. But on the flip side, she suffers from low con syndrome with only five constitution. And unlike her partner in crime, Vanessa, she does not begin with a slim lens that can complement well with her low constitution, but instead a javelin, which has a weight of 11 and a heavy spear, which as the name implies is pretty heavy. In fact, so heavy, it's equal with the brave lance for the heaviest lance in the whole game. So her spirit is impaired by a minimum of six points starting on, meaning that she technically gets more around seven speed when using the javelin. And here this is why even on chapter one, I'll go try to go around as many of the unit enemy units as possible, focusing more on the lance units than the axe units. And because of how the enemy AI functions on this map, the unit will swarm to the closest available unit, which in that case is unfortunately Seth, but we do get to avoid a lot of the fights using the map to our advantage. So we can get near Brigette here and we will take out both the soldiers and one of the axe fighters will come and attack us because at some point there's just so much dodging around we can do and we get a very nice crit here. The one saving grace Tana gets with the heavy spear is that she has super effective damage against Brigette. So what we'll do here is we will equip the heavy spear and we will wait in front of him while healing. That is because our low hit rate ish on him as you'll see in a second here is around 55 but we do hit him and we are very fortunate here. I didn't want to take the chance of missing on my attack and then losing the map and we clear chapter one. Chapter two will be its own unique beast as Tana has to face only bandits and this time she can't hide in the mountains. While Pegasus Knights have insane mobility, which I believe will give us a great time on this run, it does have two downsides. The first one being archers, we get three times damage on us, and there's one on this map, and the other one is we don't get any terrain advantages. So if we stand on a forest or a fort, we don't get any of the nice defense and avoid bonuses, unfortunately, which is usually a very essential strategy this early on in the game. If you've seen my previous solo, solo runs, you know that I usually use the woods and the forts very much. I try to love them as much as possible and even with the iron lance we get from friends which is okay you can see here that the heavy weapons do not favor us as we miss this made it and also get hit by him we have two incoming and yeah we die here that's 66 percent chance to hit it's gonna be a hard dodge so we'll have to rethink our strategy here and that is when i get an idea i decide to switch another weapon other than the iron lance that being the slim lance which we obtained from our good friend Vanessa. Cause you see the Slim Lance only has a weight of four, which allows Tana to get zero speed penalty. And on top of that, get a very nice boost to her crits. And as you can see here, our avoid is much higher than it was before. And we get a nice crit to start off the ball. And Tana doesn't end it there. She gets a second crit right after. And here you'll see the map simplifies a little bit. We still have a couple of enemies to handle. The archer being chief amongst them a problem. We're gonna have to keep him out of our range for a little bit. And we will settle Tana right there in diagonals to the wood. The reason being we can only attract one attacking unit there. Only one of the bandits, he hits us, but we will hit him twice, so that's pretty good. The archer can't reach us just yet, and the other bandit also cannot reach us just yet. So what we'll do here is we'll keep backing up little by little, staying out of the range of the archer, 
furniture. You see there's a wood back there that will stand on. The reason I stand on the wood is not because of the bonuses, it's to allow the field around Tana to be cleared so that the enemy don't get any advantages, bonuses to avoid. And we kill the first one, the second one attacks, and we get another crit. We did get a hit there, but we only have the one archer now to deal with. He's an easy kill, and the two bandits in the back left. I think we should be fine. We'll be able to settle easily on the fort with our slim lance, heal up, and while we don't get any of the bonuses, defense, and avoid bonuses from the fort, we still get the chance to heal off the fort if we get attacked, which is very nice. But now that we're out of the danger zone, let's talk about her starting stats and growth. And since we've touched a little bit on her starting stats already with her speed and constitution, we'll go through it pretty quickly. And as you can see, all her bases find themselves near the average or a little bit above for a starting level four unit. So overall, Tana is giving me hope that it's going to probably go pretty well based off on our starting stats. And when it comes to her growth, Tana has an interesting spread for a Pegasus Knight. She has high growth in speed, which you would expect with 65. It's actually tied for the second highest in the game with Combs. So that's pretty good for Tana. And her luck is also in the top echelon with 60% growth. So far, really nothing out of the ordinary, but let's look at both skill and strength real quick. Her skill growth, while not being bad, is very much in the average for this game with 40% sitting below the two other Pegasus Knights and just being uncharacteristically low for Pegasus Knight in general. But on the other hand, her 45% in strength is really nice. It's a little bit above average for this game in general and beats out both Vanessa and Cyrene. Her HP, defense, and resistance aren't too hot, but Tana isn't really meant to be a defensive specialist. So honestly, I'm okay with it. So let's talk about chapter three. We make it to Basda at the end there and we end up getting very lucky as you can see right now because we are fully out of vaults, but we do end up getting some nice dodges and crits we need. So we'll skip ahead to chapter five as chapter four is extremely easy. That first monster chapter is always a breeze. But on chapter five, our main goal will be grabbing the secret book and the Draco shield. So we'll have to slightly rush this map to stop the bandits from getting the houses. And this will be quite tricky to do with Tana because there are a lot of axe users on this map, given that a lot of bandit reinforcements show up. But also there's a few annoying archers that you have to kind of work around. So here, as you can see, there is quite a lot of characters in that little cluster and Tana cannot kill them all by herself. I mean, she can, but we'd have to get pretty insane dodge luck here, given that we're, I think, at 7 HP at the moment. And as you can see, the hit rates are near the 50% is so it's it, it, it is a risky task so what we do is we end up moving up a little bit and we will stay near Wolvulnary and try to attract at least one of them to lower our problem. We do dodge him. He dodges us, which kind of sucks here. But now we have to make sure that these two bandits don't get to that house. And we move on to the left of the shop. And all we need to do now is heal. We're out of Vulnaries and oh, we dodge four characters. So first one, dodge. No problem. Very simple. The first bandit comes on. We get hit. That's honestly fine. One hit is okay. We kill it. Other bandit, because we dodge it, we get a crit for our trouble. So that's nice. And the soldier should be no problem. Okay, so we saved the one house with the secret shield and the Draco shield house has also been done. So overall, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. However, we do get hit by one of the fighters. So our HP is really seven and we have to make it to Brigette. Well, first of all, we have to survive Joshua here. Who we don't dodge good 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 he could have killed us so now we have to make it to the boss we don't have to route this map we just have to kill Brigette. but that means try that means trying to fly around the bandits as we grab the few houses we do need Here's what I did. I flew all the way down at the bottom of the map, grabbed the Draco shield in the house because I had left it open up to this point. And then I slithered my way through the right side, staying out of the range of the bandits. And then we made it to Brigette's side of the map. And now we kill this soldier that's right in front of us. So that's not a problem. But as you can see, the fighter and the soldier are in range of Brigette. So we need to be a little clever about how we place Tana here as both of them can hit us. So we have to kill Brigette kind of right away. 
away. So what we'll do is we'll head into our supply. We we do have a heavy spear and a silver lance, which we'll both pick up here. But as you can see, the heavy spear, we're just one damage off. And that's 49% chance to hit. So I'm not sure if it's something I want to do. So let's check out the silver lance here. 41 is a lot better. And we do get 100% chance to hit. So no chance to miss. We hit the first time. We dodge the second. Okay, good. We make it past chapter five. That was actually way too close for comfort. We ran out of too much vulnerabilities too quickly because we had to heal from these archer shots that we took and these fighter shots that we couldn't dodge so overall we're in a good spot here but that was that was a little scary i'm not gonna lie we'll skip over chapter 5x as we don't get access to 10 on this map and the only thing of purpose we do is grab the keys for the two chest keys and the one door key on this map we don't use them we keep them and we move on so let's talk about chapter 6 the first fog of war map of this game and this one is always a scary one for flyers because you never know when an archer is lurking in the dark and there are a few archers on this map one or two i believe but that is not why we're stopping here it's because tana has finally reached her level 20 so let's take a look at it shall we and i gotta say wow while tana's luck is well below average she outdoes herself with 17 points in strength and 18 points in skill sitting well above the averages while all her other stats find themselves very close to averages and a very predictable maxed out speed but that's still very good i can safely assess that she surpassed all my expectation and this is the point in the game where things start getting a little easier for her while the bow users will start getting a little bit more frequent she doesn't fear them as much because she's pretty over level at this point and tana's natural bulk isn't amazing but it's decent enough to be just a little feel a little safer it also gets a lot easier because the amount of axe users beyond this point starts to decrease a lot and we start seeing more soldiers and sword users and with all that being said and an easy chapter six behind us let's move on to chapter seven where we'll save an immense amount of time simply by skipping over the water there are a few archers and a ballista but as you can see it's not much of a problem for tana we'll manage to dodge them with ease and make short work of murray so we'll move on directly to chapter 8 where we'll take an alternative routing than usual because you see there's a chest on the left hand side which can contains a very interesting item which is the Elysian Whip Tana's promo item. So after saving Ephraim and his gang, well, almost all of it as somehow Kyle dies. I'm sorry, Kyle. I, I'm very, I'm genuinely sorry. This is not a null moment. This is me being actually sorry for you. Can we get some, uh, some, some likes for Kyle? Poor Kyle. Pray for Kyle. Well, that's a first. I really can't explain it. Something weird happened. I guess I moved my units in the wrong way at the wrong place got too cocky too confident and he bit the dust but that's okay it happens so after saving the gang we will start moving making our way up to go grab the elysian whip and while all of that happens in the background let me take a minute to talk about our promotion options because as you've guessed it'll happen on this map so pegasus knights in this game of two promo options being the classic falcon knight and the exclusive to sacred stones wyvern knight and as you can see in terms of promotional bonuses at first glance falcon knight doesn't have bad ones with higher hp and defense and resistance bonuses against the one more skill you'd get from wyvern knight but there's this one specific stat that will outweigh all of those extremely quickly and that is the plus four con versus plus one and as we've been talking about throughout the whole run so far con is her massive problem tana has a harder time with the lances in this game because they're you know a lot heavier than her con so getting that extra con does come and patch a little bit of those issues and on top of that wyvern knight probably gets one of the coolest one of my favorite skills in this game with pierce you see pierce allows you to negate the enemy's defense fully so basically you get to do true damage on the character and its proc rate is your character's level as a percentage so at the max level it will have a 20 percent chance to proc level 19 19 and so on and so forth it's pretty straightforward the falcon line doesn't get access to any skill it does get access to sword which means getting access to a dalma over vidofnir for your sacred twin weapon if you s rank swords but even then vidofnir actually things very well with flyers who usually have quite mediocre defense stats so the plus five passive defense you get from it is quite valuable this time around and if that if all that wasn't enough to convince you for wyvern knights let's have a quick look at all those stat caps very quickly and while not having insanely higher caps for the wyvern knight they are still higher in strength skill and speed by one or two so i think it's pretty clear that with all those advantages we'll go with the wyvern knight here oh and added bonus points to the wyvern 
different battle and map sprites. They both look so sick as hell. They're some of my favorites in this game. So after we easily dispatch Terado using our trusty heavy spear, we make it to the route split and we make it through Erica's route as we replace Erica with Tana for the purpose of this run. So we'll do a quick stop at chapter nine because we have a first here for the solo runs, that being saving the village on the left hand side of the map. It's the first time we managed to do it because of Tana's mobility. Because remember on Fran's run, we win Great Knight. So we kind of lost on that movement that would have helped us get it. So we get to grab the Draco shield, which gives us a little bit of a boost on defense this time around. But other than that, this map isn't tough itself. There are quite a few bows user and axe users that Tana can still quite suffer against. But generally, it's overall fine. We do still pick up the speed wing from Amelia, even if we don't need it per se. It does allow our speed to be a little higher sooner. You know, we would have hit the stat caps with the level ups, but we just get there a little sooner we now arrive at chapter 10 which you would think is a challenge because of the ballista but our avoid is very good and they will not manage to hit us and we'll rush over the mountains to pablo also quick note here on turn like four garrick dies somehow and you think that would be a big deal but that means that tethys doesn't join us which means we lose out on the goddess icon that she starts with. And I don't reset for it because I don't realize that she won't join until it's too late. So, so that's too bad we lose that item. But it's not like that two luck would have mattered that much. I don't think so. But Pablo here will not stand a chance. We will very much easily dispatch him. Both chapter 11 and 12 will be go by pretty fast and we don't run into any issues at all. We do pick up the secret book and we do skip out on the energy ring from Ewan though. Because I believe that we've already maxed our strength at this point but we'll look at that in a few minutes chapter 13 will go by pretty fast too as we make it to the boss in two turns and take care of him despite the numerous ballistas and bow units that will dodge with ease it still won't be a problem the next two chapters things get a little bit more complicated as we run out of javelins so we lose a little bit of time because as you've been seeing the javelin has pretty much been my main weapon over the course of this run but our path back gets blocked by gargle and the shop gets cut off from us i guess i could have started the battle and immediately retreated to get rid of the encounter but i didn't think it would be a big deal at the time i didn't think javelins at this point would be that crucial so we run out of javelins on chapter 14 and end up having to melee range most of the enemy units which does slow us down substantially i also take an alternative path and try to attempt cutting off for knack before he swipes away the spear so i go from the bottom left and go around the throne room and attempt to open the door on the right side but when i get to the door i realize i'm out of door keys and this literally never happens i I've ran out of chest keys before, but never of door keys. I always have an extra one around this time in the game. Maybe I forgot to pick it up or it got swiped earlier by a thief. I guess we have to move on then because we can't open the door and I don't want to go all the way back around to destroy the broken wall because that would make us lose way more time. So I guess we'll move on without that extra spear. We take care of Carlisle despite the wind sword, which can do a lot of damage to flyers and move on to chapter 15, the infamous chapter 15, where we'll coast all around the map to try to grab all sorts of goodies starting with the metastome and yes i've said in the past that i don't always grab it because five percent growth isn't the most insane boost ever but given that tana enters the map at only chapter 16 that means four more levels and it can't really hurt to get that extra boost especially given that tana isn't slowed down by the sands like other units so it's not like i'm wasting a massive amount of turns by going to grab it like i did previously so the quick detour ends up being worth it in my opinion on the subject of detour let's go and see how uh, our favorite dark mage is doing and and he's gone. Well, that was quick. I guess I guess that was his time. Bye bye, Mr. Null. I even tried to give him a fort and that wasn't enough. I don't know what to do with this guy anymore. So we'll mosey on over towards Dusel as he protects Ephraim and on the way we'll grab the Swift Soul. But as you can see, we have to be careful for movement because as previously mentioned, we are out of Javelin, which means we have to try to maximize the amount of units we can kill in one turn to avoid wasting turns. So eventually we free Dusel of the small army that surrounds him and we pick up the body ring, a quick work of Calic, thanks to the Axe Reaver we picked up a little bit earlier in the run. And we do the same thing to Valter, thanks to the wonderful Dragon Spear we picked up on the previous map. And we get both the Hooplin Guard and the Philly Shield. This is the first time the Philly Shield will be essential in our run. So what it does is it stops super effective damage from bows to flyer, which means that it treats bows like a normal weapon. So we'll keep it on us around just in case. But realistically, I don't think it's going to come in handy too much as there aren't a ton of archers 
in our future? There are a couple, but not a ton. And the ones that are there aren't huge threats. But it's better to be safe than sorry, they say. Okay, let's take a minute to talk about Chapter 16 because there are a few important events here that I want to focus in on. Primarily, Tana hitting level 20. And I can only say wow once again. I am repeating myself, but holy hell. Heck, we maxed out strength, we maxed out speed, and we maxed out skill. We did use two secret books, but we still did it. We're above the average in HP, defense, and res, and that is after we use the talisman we will get on this map. Our luck is a little bit down one point, so, you know, we shouldn't max it out, but 29, 30, potato, potato, and we did miss out on the goddess, goddess like god, so I'm treating the luck as also a victory on that front, but I'll make that trade for one less luck for all those nice, blessed stats, any day of the week so overall we have a fantastic character on our hands something that's very cool on this map for tana is because of her high avoid chance she'll manage to almost be impossible to hit for the long range sages as we make our way to grab the aforementioned talisman and here you can see the prowess of a high movement character like the wyvern knight paired with the swift souls and we basically run the whole map down with no issues but that is until we hit this here hero and as you can see the game is fully frozen and no no, we didn't die we just froze the game and the reason being is because of pierce you see there is a pretty famous bug associated with the skill pierce if you end up activating pierce on your first hit and then fail to kill on the second hit without the enemy having the ability to retaliate your game will freeze I don't know the reason the game does this, but this was bound to happen at some point in the run, and it happened just now. The glitch does not happen with battle animations off, by the way, but I like battle animations, so I'm gonna keep them on, and if we run into the glitch again, we'll just reset. It's not gonna be that big of an issue. It just, you have to reset your map. Our second run through, though, goes much smoother, and we encounter no glitch, and we're on to chapter 17 after getting a very neat crit on Orson. Chapter 17 goes extremely smoothly as we get to make it to Leon very quickly since again we don't have to chop down the tree the high movement we can skip most of, most of the reinforcements and you just take care of leon without much issues but we still take two turns since he's still kind of bulkyish. chapter 18 looms ahead of us and honestly i wasn't sure how this would exactly go but as you can see right now we have no problem dodging the stones as it will sit either at zero or very close to that while it won't be a hard map due to that it'll take me a little bit to clear it since the gore Organs will mostly prioritize not getting hit and favor their long range stones over their damaging spells to avoid the counter attack from the javelins. We'll eventually break through and move on to chapter 19, which is, if it wasn't evident by now, will be a breeze. As we rush Rave, and something I want to point out here is that you'll start seeing Tana's low 24 stat cap and strength start to not necessarily become an issue, but become apparent that cutting it this low on strength stops us from clearing as fast as we'd like in the later game bosses. Time for chapter 20 and again the great thing about flyers is we get to skip half the map by simply flying over mountains and lake and here we'll rush right to morva and equip a badoff near well, as you can see 30 times 2 10 percent chance to crit he can hit us at 60 percent we'll hit him once and we get hit by the first time around i did take a chance there for something to go our way but it does, still doesn't mean it can't so we're gonna stand here take care of the reinforcements around that are gonna come and attack us and as you'll see we're using badoff near most of the damage goes around zero even if they could hit but they can't really hit because tana will be bulky using that vidofnir plus five passive very well and more of a finally attacks us and he hits us unfortunately we could get a lucky dodge lucky crit lucky pierce to trigger at any point in there but let's try again it doesn't mean it's over but you know i have to try to rush it this time around we'll take an extra turn here simply to approach it from a little bit of a safer position especially since reeve is likely to hit us with that 53 percent chance to hit and here instead of attacking straight out we heal enemy phase and decide to take the safe approach by letting him attack us first and it works because then on the counter attack we can just kill him and it's time folks for the final map and the first thing we'll do is we'll grab the angelic rope from the chest on the right side to max out our hp which will put us at that nice 60 hp that we like to see and we'll take on the first zombie dragon and we'll try to do that from range first as we can't safely one shot him so we'll go with the strategy of safely chipping him down 
So we'll place ourselves just in range of him with our spear that we picked up on the previous chapter equip and then he will come to us attack 50% chance that we dodge and we get one crit on the six damage we test out with Daphne here Ooh, that's just quite not there yet we still need a little bit more damage we do attack him we do take a huge risk here and dodge okay okay and he attacks us again and we dodge a third time yo I cannot believe it okay now we can easily take him out. We dodged three fifty percent. That's kind of insane. We'll still do Vidafnir just to be safe here and take care of the zombie dragon. That was kind of surreal how we dodged all of that and we have all our ex elixirs left. I was planning to at least have to use one elixir off the back of this guy, but turns out we did it with without using any. With this first obstacle out of the way, we clear out most of the reinforcements, which are mostly inconsequential, and we head to the Gorgon Pit around Leon, which we will clear out before moving on to Leo and I forgot to equip a backup weapon here and the doggo will show up and just attack me okay that's kind of dumb we do take the safe approach here even though I don't think we would have needed given that the gorgons have barely a chance to hit and oh well I I guess I did the right thing because that 22 percent chance did miss at all so yeah I guess I guess taking them out was a good idea then in the end all right it's time to take out Leo and first things we'll do is we will fully heal for one elixir and we have two left now we'll walk up to him check out the dog near 13 and times two eight percent chance to crit i don't want to hate it but i think we will go with the killer lance strat because as much as it doesn't do that much damage with only eight the crit chance associated with it of 38 is pretty neat so we will pure water right here when we will enemy phase and let him attack us and let's see if we can grab a nice crit or a pierce or something of the kind 59 percent chance to hit that's gonna hit us fortune 30 damage and we get a crit okay first crit down we are half hp Ah, man, we will elixir here full health. We'll have one left for the demon king. And let's see if we can get another crit. He's just, Tana's strength is so low and he hits us again. We get a pierce though. Holy crap. Okay, that was super lucky. That was so lucky. But yeah, as you can see, the, the, the 24 damage strength here can be can be tough for Leon. But the demon king, at least we have the duff near here. And it's not only going to give us a damage boost because of the super effect and this is going to give us a defense boost, which means he only does 25 damage with 46% chance to hit. We hit him. No pierce. Can we dodge? Okay, we get hit by that first one and we hit the second one too. As you can see here, we have 0% chance to crit, so we cannot bank on a crit. We can bank on pierce and, you know, being able to tank a hit due to our great friend Vidofnir here. I never thought I'd say that, but Vidofnir is coming in handy very much so. And here you can see he spawned his buddies and what we're going to do is we're going to walk away, try to get out of the range of both him and the zombie dragon, that is. The reason and being the zombie dragon will not move he will stay in place where he is so we can safely take out all the other monsters around him who shouldn't be too much of an issue hopefully we dodge most of their of the attacks but as you can see right now on the screen it won't be that much of an issue and our strategy will be extremely simple we will lure him in we know we can take an extra hit from him and we have one elixir left so this is very doable we just have to be extremely careful with how we approach it and also given that he is below 50 percent chance to hit us i think we're in a pretty good position if the luck is even just average on our side so the big thing is making sure he is out of the zombie dragon's range and here you'll see we'll place ourselves here we will equip vidofnir in order to be able to tank that extra hit so we'll end the turn we will enemy phase let him come to us okay how does that go 46 percent chance oh he hits that's so unfortunate but that's okay this plan we need to back him up one more tile two more tiles that is so he's out of this guy's range so we'll back up all the way in the corner here we'll finally heal up full health we can tank another two hits here let's see how this goes he attacks us here and we dodge okay well i think that's great now it just depends on our damage which i'm not sure because he's still above that cap where we can see so we hit the first time we get a pierce which is huge and we dodge that second one. Oh my lord even if he hits us there it doesn't matter pierce came in so clutch let's end this tale let's close the book on tana and thank you for coming mr demon king see you later alligator tana wins 
And I'd like to give a huge shout out to Vidofnir. And of course, that very clutch Pierce triggering at the end. And this run, despite certain stumbles at the start, was a pretty smooth ride all the way through. I think the dice rolled in our favor more often than not, to be very honest. But despite that, we did get some unfortunate time losses in the middle part there with no javelin. And even despite all that, we finished with a very similar time to it with then loot with 7 hours and 57 minutes. So I'm pretty happy with that. But the big thing here is, guys, we have a newest lowest turn count for this. With 330 turns overall, that is huge. That's almost 50 less than our previous ones with loot. This just goes to show that movement can really shave down a lot of turns. Not necessarily time, because that will depend on a lot of factors, but turns for sure. And that makes it extremely tough to rank. Because on one hand, what is more valuable, turn count or time? Well, if we go off by our last run, which was the Archer run, we did favor time due to our turn count being slightly inflated and not that far away from loots because we lost a few turns on archer's run by leveling up staves for nothing but then that's all within the context of that specific run here it's a little harder to judge because overall i don't exactly know how much time i would have saved if i had javelin in that middle portion i'm not thinking it's 30 minute worth of it but even with that being said i think that everything being equal turn count matters the most because time can be lost in really dumb places such as in many menus on the overworld map it really depends on a few factors on that front so i think with all that being said we have a new number one everybody i think i'm gonna put tana at number one but i'm honestly not 100 percent convinced so let's treat it as a conditional first she's conditional there i'd love to have you guys' input on the whole ordeal though so let me know in the comments if you think she should be first or second the ultimate decision is going to go down to the comment section because there's no doubt in my mind she's top two but it's where exactly that i'm kind of if on. I'm pretty positive that it's a number one because turns, my in my opinion, matter more than time. But let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? I'd love to know and I'd love to have your input because you guys are going to be the deciding factor ultimately. And we'll do that adjustment next video if you believe she should be lower than that. But with all that being said, thank you all for watching the video. Please do drop a like if you enjoyed. It helps me out a ton. And I'd like to give a huge special shout out to all our members. The list should be on the screen right now. Thank you all for your very special support. If you wish to become a member and get all the cool perks that come with it, check out the join button below. But that is it for me, y'all. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And bye bye.